All right, guys. We are going to talk about the carnivore diet and the risks, right? Benefits, but we need to talk about the risks with carnivore yogi right now. Okay, all right guys, we are Mother Second Live, and I have this amazing guest, all right? And y'all know her. This is Sarah, carnivore yogi, and she first, you guys can see her on the screen, but she first interviewed me, and we had this an amazing chat, and uh, we actually kinda did like a consultation in the middle, and then, uh, I asked her, Hey, do you want to be on my channel? And she's like, yeah. And then she's done so many things since then we need to talk about it. All right. So this, everyone right there, oops, there, this is Sarah from as carnivore yogi. What's up girl. Hey, how's it going? Hey, <laughs> how are you today? I'm doing great. I'm having a good day. It's seven o'clock here. I feel exhausted. Feeling good. <laughs> Feeling good. Okay, so you are starting to realize the the benefits, but also the risks of doing a carnivore diet, and it's people are coming out of the woodwork. The, you did a video just recently, correct? Yes, you I did a video about a week ago. On my channel said mistake. I think it's something like things that nobody talking about, essentially. And it, it's almost got 20,000 views at this point. Wow. And I have probably gotten a thousand, not exaggerating, messages from people in my Instagram DMs of people who are having the same problems and being out. Exactly. And that's the reason why I thought it's so good to have this conversation because if no one's talking about any problems arising with any diet, then everybody's just going to believe that it's so, you know, wonderful and we're all in dreamland and everything's fabulous and that can actually injure people. So why don't you talk a little bit about what you mentioned in that video? You know, some of the problems. How about first start with some of the benefits? And then we're going to go into some of the things that start to go where things start to go a little bit left. And uh, and then I'll chime in. So why don't you just give a little background so y'all listen now. This is some stuff. This is some tea. Okay. All right, Sarah, go for it. Uh, so I started the carnivore diet in January 2019. I had a ton of health problems, some autoimmune stuff going on. It just was kind of at the end of my rope. So right I got rid of my IBS, all chronic bloating, constipation, all that stuff, my GI straightened out. Uh, depression, anxiety, that was the big one for me that was the most interesting. I was on SSRIs and this was in everything sleep for most of my life since I was 14. Wow. And carnivore diet has taken away the need for me to be on any medication. Um, I have not need to go back on it vacation. It's your late now and I don't feel depressed. I don't feel anxious. So that's pretty freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, my eczema went away. I, I was just having amazing, amazing health benefits. Um, I'm a big believer in the way of eating. I don't want to go that. Just <laughs> exactly. But I, at, from my experience and after talking with you that we've been doing, there's a way that certain people are going to need to do it. There's this big message out there. Just eat, eat and drink water and don't worry about salt and you'll be fine. And I believed it and I tried it and I started running into trouble. And I just said, there must be something wrong with me because everyone says that the way it's supposed to work, it's not working for me having these problems. But it's actually something wrong with me because all these influencers and all these people are like the best thing ever. And you don't have any problems. If you're having a problem. It's your fault. Exactly. Um, 
where I'm at. <laughs> and that's where you're at. And I think um, to add on to what you're saying, people will do a carnivore diet. You turn that air conditioning down. Oh, my little, little Stephanie's freezing. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, the Greek guy is going to adjust the temperature in a second. But um, along with what you're saying, um, I think a lot of people come from having some really weird symptoms. And then when they do a carnivore protocol, they get a immediate relief or very soon mm -hmm. after relief. And so all of these sort of things that might be creeping up and starting to come at you, you don't really pay a big attention to them because you're feeling so much better. Was that you in your case? Oh, definitely. Yeah. And um, so can you start saying like the first symptoms you started to notice when you start to like tilt your head to the side? I'm uh, peeing all the time and getting up at night to pee all the time and people say, don't worry about electrolytes it's fine you don't need to worry about potassium you don't need to worry about supplements any of that stuff and i kept saying well why am i peeing all the time you're eating too much salt um you're drinking too much water um you're drinking carbonated beverages and it's the crap out of me because i never had that problem and everything I tried that people were telling me to do just wasn't working. Exactly. Until I talked to you. Yes. And I think um, for me, because I've worked with so many people over the years, primarily on keto omnivore, the switch from keto omnivore to strict keto carnivore is very similar. So now this is going on my second year of doing carnivore and the only thing I've done is added a f avocado. But because I had so much experience with keto omnivore, I knew, and I've said this for a couple of years now, the biggest problem that people are gonna run into is the electrolyte problem. And this can be really dangerous like dangerous mm -hmm. beyond measure. So I don't think you know this, but I just did a consultation with a guy who also has completely jacked up his body because his electrolytes were off, so off. So Sarah, he, um, he was doing carnivore for 16 months. He, um, wait, 16 months. And then he started feeling wonky, but he was told that he can get all, his, all of his sodium from meat and that mm -hmm. he could get his potassium from meat, so he just kind of left it alone. Were you also in the same type of situation where you felt like you could just get it all from the meat that you're eating? From bone broth, you know, and red mint salt. I thought it was just enough because that's what everyone said. And then a lot of people said, oh, you don't even need the bone broth. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, people think that you can get a lot of potassium from meat. You can. That's bacon and mass all and different types of fish that's fine no i mean the, the the amounts of potassium are very negligible you you have to balance what people don't understand is you have to balance your water intake your potassium and sodium must work together and so you can't do a bunch of salt and then get no pota not enough potassium in because your body will swell it'll start to just hold on to sodium hold on to sodium um what is that? That's other people Skyping you. <laughs> they are? Yeah. Okay, sorry people for the sound. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like I'm like, what are you here? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, what do you feel is the most important message? Because we're gonna we're gonna start talking more about what you've been doing as far as monitoring your glucose. We're gonna take this beyond sodium and pass, potassium. But what do you think is the most important message, like for you in your own voice, uh, being on the internet talking about this new movement, carnivore? Like, what do you think is the most important things? At like today, like a week from now, it could change. But like right now, what do you feel? Right now, I'm really just feeling this deep. The responsibility of somebody who has a channel and people follow me to tell people not to just listen to blanket advice, not just to read posts on Instagram or watch YouTube videos and not to think about your symptoms as, oh, it's not a big deal. We need to learn how to listen to our bodies a bit more and a lot of us have pathologized things. I mean, I pathologized coding and gas until I found carnivore. Then I was like, oh, wait, that's not normal. You know, yeah. and so don't pathologize your symptoms on carnivore if you 
having trouble, I think it's really important to seek guidance yes. and not just there quietly and suffer. Because um, it, like I said, a thousand messages, and that doesn't even the comments underneath that video. If you go read the comments underneath that video, people are suffering and they're just being told like, oh, you're just not doing, you know, you're not, you're keep, you're overcomplicating it. You're oh, just eat me, drink, drink water. You're just overcomplicating it. And that's not helping anyone. It's just not helping anyone. It's not. So that's actually what my next question was. Uh, what's the backlash um, of this really kind of, I think, paramount and brown ground breaking video that Sarah did because she wanted to express her concerns and now people are coming at her. So my question was like, how does that make you feel? Um, what position does that put you in to get the backlash Honestly, from people saying anything? It just makes me sad. You know, I, I usually don't get angry at that's just not my nature. I just kind of get sad because I'm just coming at this from my heart and from a place of wanting to help other people and a place of kindness and exactly. for people to basically say that I'm full of it or that I'm trying to put out incorrect information. It's just kind of funny because I'm like, this is a personal flaw, you guys. Like, I'm not coming out here claiming to be a nutritionist or a doctor. I say that in the front of every one of my videos. So if somebody wants to start shade then that's just on them and it shows their narcissism their insecurity absolutely uh i've obviously have gone through it as well i mean years ago i was telling people to drink stop drinking coffee and stop eating cheese and nuts because people were having histamine responses and everybody said that i was a freaking idiot there was a lot of anti stephanie videos going on they actually put me on reddit and did a whole like they played my video, they showed my video and was like, everybody's like, she's so stupid. She doesn't, she's not a nutritionist. And, blah, 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 blah. and I had to like, you know, ignore it. And it's really hard because that was so, I was so green then and they were just getting at me. So it happens. Then carnivore comes around and now everybody's like, oh my God, Stephanie, you were so right. So then you go and say, yo, you know, certain things I was feeling pretty bad and your kidney score was off, right? My GFR was your elevated. GFR. And my BUN was elevated. They were kind of in the normal ish range, but they were a very kind of like borderline. They were almost at a high level. And uh, it was actually some lovely vegan trolls who pointed this out to me, bless them. But it's, it's, they said I had the kidney function of a senior citizen, which is not accurate. You know, a medi three medical doctors said you have nothing to be worried about, but you are dehydrated. This is an issue. You may want to consider, you know, <laughs> balancing your electrolytes, taking a look at, at your routines. Um, no major problems. But yeah, my kidney function did show that there was it was under some strain. There was some stress going on there. Yeah, I mean, people don't understand this, uh, the GFR and the albumin, albumin to create creatinine like they don't understand you know, what's going on with their kidney score, the function of their kidneys. People don't know what's going on with their, their liver. They don't know what's going on with their gallbladder. And a lot of people walk around like they're so healthy and everything's fine, but really there could be underlying issues that most people are going through. So if yep. somebody goes on the internet, they're like, well, I did this diet and I ate two pounds of lean meat and I got everything from the meat that I was eating and I'm fine. To me, they're lying because, and I said this earlier today, no one on this planet feels good every day. Sorry. And they're not putting their blood work out on the internet. I mean, that's something that I did just was like, okay, y'all want to call me out on this diet. Here's all my blood work. And I'm still putting my blood work out there. I'm about to do two no more videos next week with more blood work. I'm putting it out there, but I'm not seeing all these people that are saying that they're doing amazing doing the same doing thing. That. But no. To, but to be honest, Sarah, like blood work is almost subjective. Because let's say if you have a thyroid condition and you do a, do a standard uh, thyroid stimulating hormone test yes, just gonna show and anything. it comes back right. normal, yeah. then 
everyone's going to be like, you're like, look, I'm normal, but you could be having the symptoms, which is also why like y'all need to stop. Cause I know a lot of people are going to watch this because you're here and everybody's very interested. Um, you know, people see me as this very like, you know, opinionated and, and, and self-consumed person. And there you're someone that people adore. So, you know, I think people are coming at you because you're going against the flow in their mind, like some mythological thing that they think about. And I'm used to speaking in this language. So, um, I wanted to really explain to people before I ask a few more questions of carnivore yogi that because we're modern humans, everybody's got some sort of damage going on. It could be their gut. It can be their immune system, their white blood cell count, their red blood cell count. It can be the hormones. It can be a ton of different things that we wouldn't think about. And, um, you can go testing. It can be very subjective, even with a cholesterol panel. You might have to do four panels to see sort of like where the red thread goes through and you start to see where the problems are in the different markers. And so even one test might be subjective. So even if you post your numbers and it might look one way at a certain, especially with blood values, they change so much in a day. So you guys just really, unfortunately, sometimes the blood values can give you a basic line of where to start from. Like if I have people doing, which we're going to go through your glucose numbers. Uh, And so, uh, Sarah, uh, do you mind if we go through that actually right now? That's cool. Yeah. So we're going to post, uh, Sarah, she's using a continuous glucose monitor, which is going to test her blood sugar all day long. And, um, the Greek guy, you want to say hello, Greek guy? Mm. No, you can't. Okay. There's no space for it. Hello. Uh, (laughs) please excuse me. I have everything on my head right now. Yeah, he does. Peace. Plus he's got to go live after this with a whole nother subject. So, um, so here are some numbers. If we start at the top, we can't start at the top. We can't move. Anything. Oh, it just moves. It's just it's a video. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So do you mind if I go through or did you want to go through them, Sarah? Yeah, no, we can go right through them. It's fine. Okay. So I'm going to just go look through some of the numbers and I really understand these numbers just because I have so many people use a glucometer over the years. So what you want is a bunch of numbers. What she did was great with the continuous glucose monitor because we can go and see the algorithm, right? Her bio biological algorithm and also the circadian rhythm. So here we have numbers. I saw all the way from 70 up to 90 and I think over a hundred and some of them. So here's 90. Here we have 91. We have let me see here. We have 95, 98. We're getting 101. Oops. 10. Yeah. What? 101 was at night, 9 p.m. I saw it in the morning oh, because it. I can see yeah, it because closer. He, because he, yeah, he can see it closer. He's closer to the screen. And I'm, y'all don't know I'm like, you know, yeah. five feet away from a screen. Um, so and we, uh, from uh, uh, Miss Yogi over there. Yeah. Uh, the email was the first video that uh, you sent us uh, uh, with the after two pounds of meat. Oh, okay. If yeah. you want to comment on that. Do you have, do you have the number for that? Cause I can't see it. So at 7.40 AM, she has 102. Uh, then 10, 10 AM, she falls at 87. Uh, around 12.37, uh, 87. Uh, 12, uh, uh, 3, 25, 72, uh, 4, 45 PM, 79. Okay. I'm gonna stop for a second. You guys, right. Her number should continue to drop. They're rising from four. This is not good. Continue. Uh, yeah. Great guy. And then at, uh, around, uh, uh, 934, we have 98. And at 10 p.m. we have 101. So All right. she's rising through the night. She's rising through the night. Okay, guys. So because I have so much experience, so anybody who goes against Sarah on this subject of her blood glucose, that this is normal, I'm sorry. Here's where I'm going to sound like an arrogant jerk. You guys are naive and kind of like something that rhymes with rum, but starts with a D. Um, <laughs> Like how, like how many brain cells do you have to rub together to know there's something wrong? Like really though. And the thing that worries me, Sarah, is that those numbers are so crazy. Like you went from 70 to one Oh, I even like, I think maybe a 69 in there or I saw 70 for sure to friggin' one Oh two. 
That's not so normal. Huh? And I hadn't, I hadn't eaten anything since like four or five in the afternoon. And I was confused because this, these numbers were from back in December when I was wearing the CGM, but I hadn't really changed anything okay. since then. I've been doing the same thing, just meat, not even any eggs, um, different kinds of meat, but mostly just red meat. And I was watching those numbers on the CGM and I'm like, why are my, why are my numbers going up? before bed that just doesn't make any sense to me nope. uh, and then in the night hitting a hundred something it, it just didn't make sense no it didn't uh, did you want to say something quicker uh, yes hello can you move uh, from my face Sorry. thank you <laughs> in front of my face uh, something else that uh, happened just yesterday I ate uh, uh, a hamburger without the bun uh, yesterday night uh, today morning uh, 108 my glucose and uh, a fun fact uh, my wife yesterday had the brightest idea to buy a pizza with a coca-cola her blood glucose after the coca-cola was 148 okay so that's diabetic I think that's diabetic <laughs> that's so diabetic. one coca-cola <laughs> that's die. That's full on type two diabetic number. That's crazy. Okay, thank you, Greek guy. So um, before you comment, Sarah, I wanted to kind of go over what those numbers mean. So anyone who wants to go against her, you can throw it all at me. I'll take it all. All right. <laughs> Roadhouse rules. Right. <laughs> Okay, now you, let me explain to you guys what your blood sugar should look like if you are uh, ketotic. So people think like if you drop your uh, uh, carbohydrates and sugars out, um, you should naturally just reach ketosis. You don't need to add extra fat. You can eat meat because of the absence of, of uh, carbohydrates and sugars, your body will naturally produce ketones. This is true to an extent, okay? And I've explained this to people for years. If the blood glucose is too high, ketones become very unusable. They're not viable. And that's why people can still have uh, a tired in the afternoon, tired certain parts of the day, have postprandial hypoglycemia, reactive hypoglycemia. And now because they're getting tired, they start to develop second and third problems, would be, which would be hypoglycemia chronic, and then on to thyroid problems and then reproductive hormonal problems with the sugars that Sarah was exhibiting if she were to continue to do this for years at a time. And so when in the morning, and there's two things you can have, if you're ketotic, really, you can tell when people are just, their bodies are very relaxed when they sleep because they'll w wake up with a ketotic number, which is going to be between 69 to 80 milligrams per deciliter with ketones between a 1.8 and a 3.0. And I've seen this with many people. They feel great. They can eat their breakfast. They don't crash after breakfast and they can continue on with their day being ketotic and being leveled off, not having any issues. Now there are the people that wake up with high glucose in the morning. And there are some people that can wake up with glucose at 100 milligrams per deciliter. That's a bit high. I would say more like, um, th that's, that's worrisome, but I could say that you can get around an 89 and still be ketotic. You can still be ketotic. And the reason why your blood sugar might spike out of a key ketogenic range is because your body's going through a thing called the early morning dawns phenomenon. The early morning dawns phenomenon is when your body knows naturally when to wake up. Cortisol is a hormone that's going to raise your blood sugar to wake your butt up. So you can be like, ba -ba -da -da, let's go. Now, some people are so dialed in, they get enough sleep, they get enough REM cycles throughout the night, they get enough deep sleep, and now their body's ready to get, let's get going, let's not lie in bed all day, and they'll come up with higher numbers. Even though they're on a, a carnivore or keto or whatever, they'll wake up with higher numbers, and then you'll start to see the trend of it dropping. So your dropping isn't really dropping because yours can oscillate between 70 and 90 even in the day. But what we saw is a trend of it continuing to go higher at night. That's where disaster hits the wall. So that's not normal. So for anyone who says that that's normal, you need to go get a lobotomy, okay? Because if, <laughs> if you're saying that that's normal, you should be responsible for the health issues that you're gonna create in people if they believe that nonsense. So her blood sugar should trend down.
You know why her blood sugar should trend down? Because it's, it's, we're following a circadian rhythm. Between two and four in the afternoon, you're having a shift from cortisol. Cortisol goes like this in the morning and then there's that tilt like, like you're on a roller coaster and starts to trend downwards. That's when her blood sugar should start to drop. That four o'clock time, that's when cortisol is like, I need to go down so melatonin can rise because melatonin's going to begin to relax your central nervous system and your adrenals, okay? You're supposed to relax and then eventually hibernate and then eventually sleep. Hers trends upwards. So, um, Sarah, why do you think that your numbers are trending upwards in your opinion before I say anything? I think I probably wasn't eating enough fat and I was also doing a decent amount of fasting. I was doing, um, sometimes I was doing OMAD one meal a day. A lot of times I was doing two meals a day. So my first meal around like one o'clock, second meal around five o'clock. And, um, yeah, that's what I think. And also there could be some electrolyte imbalance in there at play as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Greek guy, do you want to comment on that? Cause that's your, that's your lifestyle. Uh, exactly my point. You were living my life, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, it's, uh, it's. You've done the same. You're saying. Yeah. Right now, right now, though, I am uh, uh, mainly between eighty and uh, ninety-five. You're fasted. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we don't mean to bring him in, but I think it's kind of good that we're bringing the Greek guy in because he's just starting to do this keto lifestyle or low carb. And he has a very similar thing as you. He will eat one meal and wake up with high glucose the next morning or having issues with his sleep or with high numbers or not feeling well, feeling tired in the day. So, um, okay. Gain 10 pounds in like one day without even having eaten anything to cause that was another thing that was like, how the hell did I just wake up 10 pounds heavier? And you know, my body was starting to do that also. That's when I was like, all right, I got to get some help here. <laughs> For sure. So that to me is immediately a screaming sign of a, an, of an electrolyte problem. And I think the two things can marry together because you're having a stress on the body from eating one meal a day from fasting you're not ketotic. You were eating how much meat in, let's say if you ate one meal a day? If I was eating one meal a day, it was probably closer to a pound and a half. Okay. But if it was okay. two meals, it was always around two pounds. Total for the day. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so the problem is, uh, with you, Sarah, I think is not following any macros that could ever be ketotic. You're following the macros that people say, well, just make you healthy, fit and fabulous. Is, am I correct? Yeah. Just eat ribeyes all day and life will be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, also Greg, I don't forget to remind me of the time because Sarah's got to be somewhere and we don't want to, mm, I don't want to, we're overtime. live streaming right now. 28, 29 minutes. Okay. So we're good. Okay. We're I guess. Good. So, um, so I want, first I want to be clear on the blood sugar and then we're going to talk about your symptoms of the water retention and how long did it take and things of this nature. But so if her blood sugar is running, is trending high at night, that means that think about it. Cortisol is a wake up hormone. So it's quite kind of normal that people can have the early morning of dawn's phenomenon and have high fasted glucose in some cases. Yes. Uh, but to have those numbers at night is scary because the adrenal glands are making that sugar. I had that blood sugar when I ate carbs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, when I was eating full on carbs, I would have blood sugar at 98. That was around the number that I'd have my blood sugar. You're not eating any carbs. So you guys, where is that glucose coming from? Oh. She's eating her own muscle. And the second you start eating your own muscle to raise your blood sugar from the absence of ketones, that puts stress on the body and that affects your thyroid. It affects everything. It really messes up your system. And people aren't going to tell you this, number one, because they don't know. They don't know this stuff. They're like, oh, I ate meat and I did it for 15 years. And I don't know who that chick is who's been eating carnivore 15 years. And she says that she's feeling great. Sorry, I'm gonna, I have to call out BS on that um, because everybody's got a bad day, including myself, period. 
Um, so the glucose being high, now her body, you have to look at that there's fires all over the body. And her body's trying to rest, but it can't. Her blood sugar keeps, you saw the, you saw the numbers. They were trending upwards. So when she's trying to sleep, how's she gonna sleep? Her wake up hormone is just like, cortisol, cortisol, wake up. So you said, so you were waking up throughout the night, right? I was waking up. It started about October. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to disrespect anybody in the community or whatever, but, um, and what they're saying and call anyone a liar. But for me, okay. that advice just didn't work for me. You know, I was waking up all night and peeing all night and I didn't feel that good. You know, all my symptoms about the depression and the IBS and anxiety, those were at bay, which is why I just kept going. Because I was like, I don't want to go back on medication for depression, anxiety. I mentally feel so much better. I don't have gas and bloating. But this waking up all night stuff is a problem for me. It is. And it's not good. Your body can't repair your body. The body likes to repair. Really, it starts kicking in between midnight and 3 a.m. But it starts at 9 so if you're going to bed around 10 and you're not getting into a deep sleep because your blood sugar becomes hypoglycemic, that's the reason why her blood sugar is trending. It'll go high and it'll bounce. It'll start bouncing. It'll waver. It should trend low and just hum throughout the night. And uh, you mentioned about like calling out people and calling them liars. It's not, it's not that I think that people are liars, although I'd like to say that kind of stuff, like, you know, in reality. But it, I, what I would like to say is that people aren't divulging all the details. They're not being 100% transparent because when you believe in a diet so much, you don't want to scare people off by saying, well, hey, you know, my my GFR numbers have come back weird. My creat, creat, creatinine and albumin numbers have come back funky. Or I'm waking up all the time and I don't know what this is because you know, you believe that it's healed you in so many ways. Why would you include these things that you're not even sh sure about? So Sarah, a lot of people don't know that they're exper experiencing symptoms that are not, that, that are not okay. And so they won't divulge, wow, I kind of felt bad for three days. I felt really, really bad. So you can't trust me. You can't trust Sarah. You can't trust anyone until we tell you we're having a bad day. And then we're just trying to figure it out because nobody is perfect all the time. The demands of being, being a modern human don't make it so we can be in balance and homeostasis all the time. So it's not really calling people a liar. They're just not divulging all the truth because they believe so much in what they're trying to preach. Whereas I'm at this juncture of being online for so long, I, I kind of don't care about the, all that PC stuff. And I don't think that there's a community because I think people are calling out each other too much. I think that it's a movement and it's a really awesome movement, but I think we need to become more of a community because I don't think we are there just yet. But um, so, uh, so when your blood sugar is all over the place, this can affect your thyroid, which you know I'm concerned about in your adrenal function. But let's talk about this whole electrolyte issue and the water gain. When did that start? Oh gosh, it started getting really bad. I would say right about the time my sleep started getting really disrupted. Um, the waking up to pee all night thing would happen kind of on and off throughout all of last year. It would go away and then it would come back and then it would go away and come back. And then it just right around October, it was just like here to stay. Wow. And the water weight thing would just happen usually like around PMS time. I would just be like, oh, this is just PMS symptoms, you know, and I'd wake up 10 pounds heavier, but it would be painful. Like it would hurt to bend my knee. Um, it didn't feel like fat. It just felt like something's really off. And my husband would notice it. my eyes would get puffy. I posted a picture on my Instagram. My eyes were like totally swollen all around. And, um, yeah, it just felt like crap. Yeah. And the thing is a lot of people I think might be trying to call out Sarah for like getting it wrong and she's got the information wrong. And that's why I'm kind of here to help really give her support because I've seen this in a lot of clients. Everybody out there, you can't just use yourself as the example. Oh, this person did it. You can't do that. Please don't. Because a lot of people are going to get misinformation. If there's something wrong, please, right, Sarah? Pay attention to yeah. it. That's what you were saying in the beginning of this stream, right? Don't pathologize your symptoms. If, you, if you're having, don't just say, well, this person said, that this is the way it's supposed to be. So I, I'm doing something wrong. You know, I should just ignore this. 
Yes, and I think that's that happens within the vegan community too. If you're not feeling well, they say you're doing it wrong. Um, yeah. Now, yeah, you probably were doing it wrong, and I'll tell you what you were doing wrong. You you weren't balancing out your sodium and potassium for that swelling. Um, but just eating some meat is not the answer. Can be very problematic. So I just want to explain a little bit. And I'm not the expert in this, but I definitely have seen this a lot in people. So in this concept of an electrolyte imbalance, I've had it. It's the thing I've been saying for the last four years solid. The one thing that has that I, if I'm not careful, then I will frack myself up by not being on my electrolytes. I've been saying that for a while now, and I'll tell you why. When you drop out the carbohydrates, right? You have the carbs and sugars. For it's, it's it can be from one gram of sugar or to up to four that your body will hold on to water when you eat carbs carbohydrates or sugars so when you drop them out especially with carnivore right you're dropping out all of your carbohydrates your starches and your sugars your kidneys are going to a lot of water right because the cells are holding on to water because of the carbohydrate so you cut it out you drop a lot of water that immediately is going to put stress on your whole internal reservoir and definitely the kidneys, right? Because people become chronically dehydrated, right? So you're probably holding on to water and dropping a lot of water, which is affecting your kidneys, okay? So um, I guess I should ignore you, Greek guy. Yes, for now. Okay. Um, you guys, there's a ton of things on the screen and he's typing on it. You can't see it, but I can see it huge. But anyway. I to send a message to you without them knowing. Oh. I'm keeping secrets from you guys. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the, the problem is, is that, um, okay, so you have, people are like, how much sodium, potassium, right? Nobody knows yeah. exactly for sure because everyone is different. But I can give you guys kind of the ballpark range of what you should think about. So. If it's not 100 degrees and you don't live in Arizona, okay, or Death Valley here in California, okay, where it's 120 degrees, then, um, yo, yes, please. Thank you. Okay, sorry, guys. Just ignore me. If you're not living in these hot temperatures and that means you're not sweating all the time, then the amount of salt, right, because there's the amount of sodium, which is one measurement, and then there's salt. That's not the same. Salt is sodium, but the weighing of it is not the same. There's sodium in, in, in plants and meats. So we're talking about salt. I'm not talking about strict sodium. If you're taking salt and you're taking Himalayan salt or Celtic salt or Redmond's, which I did an experiment and I heard that Redmond's is better than Himalayan. No, it's because I've been doing this for so long. It's Himalayan. That's number one. So what I do is I do, I mix all three together. Gray salt, Celtic salt, Himalayan, and and uh, the the Redmond. So I that's what I suggest as well for you guys to to mix them all. When it comes to the uh, like benign heart palps, to me tend to uh, go down with uh, uh, Himalayan uh, than other, any other salt. Now um, uh, you you need uh, uh, so the, it works like this. So the cells go like this with sodium and potassium. This is called a sodium potassium pump. So you're letting in sodium molecules and then they're being pumped out and you're letting in potassium molecules and then they're being plump, pumped out. So they go in and out like this. And so you have three molecules of sodium and then two molecules of potassium will be released. And they have to work like that all the time because if they don't work like that, right, then you swell, you get benign heart palps, you're tired, you affect the kidneys. Which sounds like this is a bit like you, Sarah. Does that make any sense yep. to you? Resonate? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, I have a question. Were you drinking enough water at that time? I mean, I feel like I was, but I might not have been. I had tried to cut back on my water because that was one of the other suggestions from people. So I was trying to even limit myself to like a liter, a liter and a half per day and not go above that. Why? Yeah. Why did they say that? Because because they're like, that's why you're peeing so much. You're just drinking too much water. So cut it back. Are we at Sesame Street here? Like, that's <laughs> like, I'm Apparently sorry. So. That is the most, that makes no sense. Okay, so what if you're diabetic and you're peeing, right? Should you cut back on the water and like have to go to the emergency room? Right. Because you're dehydrated? I mean, her 
kidney scores off. People are telling her to drink less water. I can't with this nonsense. Okay. You guys, I'm not arrogant. I, I just, just see I, it. Huh? Just at least. What was that? I've since upped it to at least two liters per day yes. throughout the day. So good job. Yes. And that's yes. At least two liters. Definitely. You guys, I know I come across as like, you know, um, sanctimonious and all this. I've just worked with enough people who have severe, uh, injury to doing these things wrong and illnesses, which is why I barely make any money because I keep saying things that people, uh, will make it, make me unpopular. So I'm the person just, just gives it to it straight. And I think that's a better way because it's for me personally, it leaves a tattoo memory and you'll get irritated with me, but at least I'll, I've left a, 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 a memory. You can file it and be like, oh, I need to be careful for this. Um, okay. So the amount of sodium and potassium works around. This is not exact because everybody is different, but it's about six grams a day. That's about a teaspoon that's spread throughout the day. Not all at once, right? Because the body has to go and it's like, some people, okay, I just had a guy who's got, he, he did, he kind of did what you did, sort of similar thing. His electrolytes are so bad now that if he has a, a little bit of sodium, he, um, he feels sick. He feels like he's dying and his potassium is zero. Like he barely has any potassium storage because his electrolytes, his cells don't know how to take in uh, sodium or potassium. Like he's screwed on both ends. And he had to quit work. He's like, I can't work because I feel so bad. And I said, you have to get in sodium or what are you doing to try to get in sodium in some kind of way? And he said that he was uh, drinking it. And I said, don't do that. I said, take that sodium and put it on food to slow down digestion. So the sodium, the salt goes into your body more slowly. So your body is more equipped than to have a dump through liquid. So that's another thing that we have to consider is if you're having that issue where you're swelling or you feel really tired now because you've damaged your ability to balance your sodium and potassium, but this is very rare, but this can happen because he did this for 16 months and this is what happened to him. But the average person who's just starting to run into problems like you, Sarah, you, um, you do about six grams spread throughout the day and um, don't try to dump things cause you feel bad because you can overwhelm the system. Don't go, Oh, I'm going to put a tablespoon in water and just drink it. Don't do that. Then you're going to have to have potassium. So the potassium is about 275 milligrams of sodium. Now this is sodium potassium. This is supplemental. I'm not talking about, this is carnivore people who don't do any plants, right? And you have to be very careful for so sodium uh, bicarbonate and, and so you, so sorry, potassium chloride and potassium bicarbonate. These are the types of potassium supplemental that are, can damage the kidneys. So a more safe potassium is potassium citrate. But here's the problem. Some people who do carnivore have histamine to anything that's a citrate but we don't know. You're going to have to go and buy it and try it to see if you react. Right. But don't go use by bi bicarbonate. This is what that guy was doing. And he was dumping, I think it was almost 3000 milligrams of sod sodium bicarbonate. And I said, if you have kidney problems now, you're just waiting for them to just completely destroy them. So we have to be very careful with the advice that we give out there to people. So, um, it's about, so a typical bag of sodium, uh, sorry, potassium citrate typical is between 275. I think it's 275 or 350 or 450. I'm sorry. If you're getting a bag of powdered potassium and the serving size is 275, that's a, that's like a pinch, like dink, dink. So you would take a dink of sodium citrate. Oh, I keep saying sodium potassium citrate and bink it throughout the day in your food, right? That's going to get you a little bit over a thousand. Now they say 4,700 milligrams to the six grams of salt. But now people aren't sure because of our diets, we don't need 4,700 milligrams because you would not get that in nature. No meat is going to have that much friggin' potassium. So we don't want our, our potassium to be too high because that pump can get all wonky, right? So what you want to do is you, if you're doing, uh, 
keto carnivore, you want to be able to get your potassium from meat broth because guess what bone marrow has? Glutamate. What do carnivore people have? Histamine intolerance. Okay. Um, and so you want to take a meat, meat broth, slow cook it for five, six hours. Don't add that the freaking vinegar like people are telling you and just use the potassium in that water and in things like organ meats, like liver and in your salt, right? That's how you do it and make sure you get those two liters of, two liters of water a day. Now, like I said, the range is diff differs from people to people. Some people might have to have a little bit more uh, potassium citrate or potassium and some less. So what, what say you on this whole subject, Sarah? Where, what now? Uh, what am I doing? Yeah, do, does that make sense to you about yeah. trying to balance out your sodium potassium? Because didn't you say you felt better? Why don't you tell, talk to people on how you feel now after making changes? Yeah, I, mean, I literally have been doing what you've been telling me to do for a week and a half now. And within the first week, I dropped 10 pounds. Um, just water fell right off my body. I went from waking up five, six times a night to once. Now, and I feel like that's going to dwindle at some point. Um, I have a lot more energy. I'm not getting exhausted at all hours of the day. Um, yeah, I, I feel a ton better. I've been talking about it on my channel. I'm like, you guys, these are things we need to pay attention to because I feel like a completely different person. And just to have 10 pounds fall. And I took, I did a side by side picture. I posted it on my Instagram and on my YouTube of my face, like all the swelling and my body looked the same way, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. I feel better I'm taking that advice. I'm taking the meat broth you guys go on my channel on Thursday morning, I just did a meat broth video. So I made some meat broth, did a whole video showing you guys how to do it. I've, I've been doing the meat broth every single day. Um, yeah. Love Feeling it. good. Love it. You guys yeah. listen to her. This is her own N equals one experiment. She proved that she had electrolyte imbalance. And we did a, a consultation. So I was alluding to that. Hey, I think it's this. Why don't you try these things? But then she did it on her own and saw the, the results right away. So now you guys and the, the advice that she's going to give you is not bad. You know, it's like, here's a meat broth. You can't lose with that because there's no glutamate and there's no oxalates and you got the potassium in the water. It's a no brainer. So you guys watch her uh, upcoming video on how to make uh, meat broth because that'll be better, super beneficial for everybody out there. But let's talk about this whole adrenal thing with that fasting because you were hit with that. I think, can we pull up that image? Yes. We're going to pull that up. We're going to talk about that. Sarah, what say you on this whole thing? Cause you know a little bit more about this than I do. Can well, you... I don't know if it was a Cigar direct Cigar. hit on you, but it she came out it. the day. Sorry, is this the... <laughs> she can't say it, my bad. Let me just read this real quick so you guys can make, I don't mean to cut you off, Sarah. Fasting is not for, wait, fasting is not the culprit for adrenal insufficiency. Yep, that's it. All right. And that came out day after I posted my video basically about my experience with fasting and how it wrecked my adrenals. That kind of hurt. Kind of makes me feel like my whole story and my whole experience is somehow not valid and not true scientifically. Um, but I'm just sitting here telling y'all what's going on and I stopped being able to sleep and I felt like crap all the time and I was fasting all the time. So hit yeah. me with another study. <laughs> yeah. Like here's the thing, you guys, you know, I've been talking about fasting is not good for you. You know, I'm 52 going on 53. I've done, 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 done this whole thing for 12 years nonstop. Let me tell you right now, I have con clients all the time and they come at me every single person I've ever had a consultation with in the last year who's done fasting and OMAD has had health issues, bad ones, adrenal insufficiency, thyroid problems. The, the, the menstrual cycle starts to get wonky. Yep. That was the other problem for me. That's what made me stop is like, I'm not getting my period. That's not normal. 
And I was like, oh, well, you're, you're getting a little older, so that's normal for your cycle to start wavering. You're 40. And I was like, maybe, but the fasting was a direct cause to me not getting Exactly. Yo. But fasting, I got my cycle all the time. Yo. And then I started fasting and it went away. Exactly. Look, you guys, you're 40, right, sir? Yep. I'm 52. I got a cycle. Okay. I have a 28 day cycle. So when people start to say she's older, it's like, it's kind of, it confuses you. You're like, well, am I? I mean, cause you're not sure. I can say at this age, it's not normal that she starts to have an inconsistent cycle. So N equals one experiment, ex, ex, experiment. You cannot tell somebody that they're feeling wrong or thinking wrong when they're, when they're going through their own experience and she did something and that created problems and then she stopped doing it and she fixed herself. So let's not overcomplicate this by saying that she's hallucinating because you know, doctors, that's what they tell us. You feel bad and they put you yep. on an antidepressant pill. <laughs> um, that's the game for my whole life of like, Oh, your symptoms are not valid. Sorry. Go find another doctor. You know? I mean, yeah. haven't we already been through this enough? And now it seems like it's popping up in the movement, I guess you're calling it now, but it's a thing to say, well, no, that's not real. Exactly. So this is where, um, kind of rubber hits the road in the context of, you know, I want, I think, I think it's very courageous for Sarah to come out and sort of talk about her own experiment and her, no, her symptoms and then the, what she did to try to correct herself and the being open-minded enough to reach out for help or to talk to the audience and talk about your experience. And I think Sarah, a lot of people are going to resonate with you saying like, Hey, I had some adrenal issues. I was really tired. My menstrual cycle got wonky fasting. Hey, I had 10 pounds gain and 10 pounds loss electrolyte insufficiency, you know, eating that much protein might be contributing to those high blood glucose numbers. And also you have to consider that the, the, if you have enough a stomach acid to even break down all that meat, there's so many moving right. parts. So I think it was just really awesome that you d you're deciding to talk about this because I don't think anyone else is in this carnivore thing. Are they? I'm not seeing it. I mean, I haven't seen it. You know, I'm, I'm glad to start. This is, I'm trying to start a conversation here with, and I have with all of the people that follow me and all those thousand, yeah, a thousand DMs that I got about people having these problems, but I don't see any of like the leaders in the community coming out and saying, you know, here's a problem I've experienced and how I fixed it even, or something I'm running into that I'm scratching my head on. I'm just seeing, you know, and I don't want to sit here and say that Judy necessarily put that post out against me, but it kind of felt that way um, because it came the next day after my fasting video um, because I know a lot of people tagged her and were asking her because she is an authority in the community. Hey, did you see Sarah's fasting video? You know, um, and I respect Judy quite a bit. So I'm going to sit here and be like, oh, that's a bunch of crap. But, you know, it's just another kind of example of, someone's coming forward with a story and then we're just going to throw a bunch of data to say it's not true. She doesn't know what she's talking about, you know, with her body that she's lived in for 40 years, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Cause here's, you know, I'm going to say this right now, this data, it doesn't mean nothing at all. We're at, we're on a, a new frontier. This is all new to everybody. People still can't break down the science yet. People still don't know if they're experiencing autophagy by fasting because it's not measurable. And we make assumptions because we have this confirmation bias. We want to believe in something that we're doing. If you're talking about it as an influencer, why would you contradict yourself? So then you have to start, uh, you know, potentially putting statements out to kind of, you know, let everybody know. Hey, this person over here who's has a very strong voice in this community. Um, uh, well, let me tell you this, you know, there's nothing wrong with fasting. It has its autophagy benefits, you know, whatever it is, people are starting to, um, and hold on, Greek guy. I think that because she's, she's 
that Sarah's got to go soon. Yeah. I'll just continue with the live stream when she goes, mm -hmm. and I'll okay. take the question, people's questions afterwards oh, okay. because I want to continue to talk, talking with her. So he was writing notes to me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, I really want to state out there that whoever these people are, I don't even know who this person is, um, but if you're putting out videos saying, you know, somebody says, hey, I'm going through problems, and trust me, Sarah, you like broke the internet with this. You literally broke the internet with this, that video. Like, not with people who don't follow carnivore, but with the carnivore community, you broke the internet. You did something yeah, that no one, yeah. Fun. It was like, wow, I think I'm onto something here. Yeah, can you tell me some of the, the comments that you've gotten from people who resonate with what you're saying? I would love to hear them. Oh my gosh. I mean, everything from, I got emails from people who were, because I have my email on my YouTube too, even though I say, please business only. Um, I got emails from people who were just desperate, like, please, can you help me? Like an email that said help in all caps, you know, as a subject from somebody who was having severe kidney problems, severely dehydrated. I'm living on Medicaid, but I'm trying to do this carnivore diet. It broke my heart. Like these messages literally broke my heart. That's kind of why I think I'm getting so upset about that little bit of a backlash um, because y'all can see all those messages from people who are like, why did my A1C go from 5.1 to 6.2 since I've been carnivore? Um, my blood glucose is really high. I'm really thirsty all the time. I'm really tired all the time. I've gained 25 pounds and everyone just keeps telling me to eat more meat, even though I've gained weight, you know, and I've said that to people too, which is not good advice. So I'll take ownership of putting bad information out there that I was thinking was good. Um, but you know, these concepts just literally broke apart. And I, that's why I've been trying to kind of create more videos, create more content to address a lot of this stuff. And I can't get to all the messages and I can't get to all the comments, but man, y'all seriously broke my heart with the problems that people are having. And you know, it's that. Yeah. And the thing is, um, uh, first of all, I want to, cause I want to say, uh, to that, um, like I said, what, what you did was so awesome. And I want you to know, to know right now that the, um, the love and the support that you're going to get from this community is going to outweigh a few comments that people are giving you pushback. And I just want you to rem remember that because people pushed back me when I said, no coffee, no nuts, no cheese. And I used to say it all the time and they just slammed me and I just wouldn't change. And then eventually people soften up and they'll say, thank you. I didn't agree with you before. And now I see that you were right. You'll get that. So I wouldn't even pay no mind to that because people are going to be so appreciative of what you're, and they already are. You're going to get more yeah. people being keyed into you by being transparent then by trying to make everything look perfect, I think people are going to resonate with you a lot more because of that. And so I, I'm just, you know, I want to commend you on doing the, this video and starting to show people, here's how you protect yourself from this juncture yeah. forward. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. I mean, yeah. it all started with our interview and, uh, no, right? <laughs> I got a bunch of comments under that one that actually were hilarious. I had one woman say, well, you've just lost a follower. <laughs> I'm like, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I appear to people don't know who you are when you're on the, on when the camera goes on. It's a very weird space to exist in. Who I am off camera is not what you see on camera. I mean, I am who I am on camera, but people don't understand. Um, you know, and I think these comments come from my live streams. They don't come from videos because all the videos are like, oh, you know, be careful for this and try that and think about this. That's all my videos. When my live streams, I'm like really sassy. Um, but people's health is serious. What you, the direction you were going, Sarah, could have created really bad kidney damage. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was show up on that blood work. So, yeah. yeah. Um, the Greek guy, is there any questions for her on this, uh, uh, particularly to Sarah? Uh, particularly to Sarah? No, I don't think so. Uh, right there, there is, because it's a, a carnivore yogi. 
Yeah, nobody talks about uh, keto carnivore issues. Everybody keeps saying it is bliss. Yeah, okay, so with an somebody, ugly face. somebody was like, you know, supporting you. Um, Someone's talking to you saying that everyone talks about, no one talks about the real issues. Everyone says it's blissful, like everything's perfect. So she is, you, you are getting comments like that on the chat. And I think below there were some more comments like that. Mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Marshall says the, media, the medical system is so frustrating. I feel for people that uh, have health issues. My mom has autoimmune disease as well. Ironic. What? Autoimmune disease. Uh, autoimmune, okay. As well, ironic because I have gut issues. It's all interconnected. Yes. So that's the, these are comments to support what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you did the video showing that. Uh, um, like this is what's going on with me and then people are saying well this is what's going on with me as well and as far as i'm concerned uh, people will either love me or hate me because i am pretty uh i say what i think and i don't try to soften things um and this my experience comes from sarah that and i told you this privately that i put somebody in the hospital by giving advice that i wasn't knowing about because they're electrolyte yeah imbalance was so bad they were so dehydrated he went to emer the emergency room and that's when i just started sounding like went from like energy 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 and so innocent in videos to sounding like a little stickler <laughs> that's why it just happens i'm i'm scared to death of somebody getting sick off of what i'm saying so this you can't see that image that that uh this girl wrote um but this woman but um that fasting is not the culprit for adrenal insufficiency. Yes, it is. It's 100% the culprit. I mean, this is where my attitude comes into play because I have so many clients that are sick with adrenal insufficiency and they develop it, develop Addison's disease and thyroid problems and their hair is falling out, their menstrual. And on, another thing is, you know, we're women and our bodies yeah. are way more sensitive to our hormones than just men. It's not just, you know, your blood glucose or insulin, it's also your reproductive hormonal system. I mean, how do you feel about your system and, you know, people saying that you're, uh, that uh, you're getting in that age and this is normal. Like, what do you feel about that? I don't feel that it's normal. I mean, I can tell with my body when things are flowing the way that they should, so to speak, and when they're not, and it definitely has not felt normal, you know, at all. And I don't believe that 40 is the time for perimenopause to show up. You know, you can start having some symptoms, but I don't think it's time for irregular cycles this early. I just don't. No. It's not typical for women in my family. It wasn't typical for, you know, you always look at your mom and it's not typical. So, yeah, I don't think that's a thing. I don't either. Sarah, what do you think about, you know, some of the men saying this like large amounts of meat that you should be consuming? What do you, what did you feel about that when you were doing it? And like, what do you, what, what's your thoughts on the subject? You know, I just hear a lot of men, especially saying, if you want to lose weight, eat a lot of lean protein and cut back on the fat. And whenever I did that, I felt even worse. I mean, I know that my blood, sh I don't have a CGM uh, data from doing that, but I am pretty sure my blood sugar was way, way high when I was trying to do um, a low, you know, lower fat, higher protein. Right. I felt terrible and I was hungry all the damn time. I was always hungry. I could eat three pounds of lean meat and still be starving. Um, so I think that that's not really the best advice for people. Um, it wasn't good advice for me. Now, were you confused that your weight kept fluctuating on these concepts that they told you to do? Like, were you like, were you like, I, totally I don't understand. Baffled. I just went up again and down and yeah, I was baffled. Cause I'm like, Oh, Hey, I woke up, I woke up 15 pounds lighter and I couldn't tell you why. And then, you know, three weeks later, I wake up 10 pounds heavier and have no idea why. And I'm like, well, I'm doing everything that they're saying I should do. It's just not making any sense, you know? Um, I felt very confused. Whew. Um, 
Yes, you did. You felt confused and it's confusing and you know, we have to just put our minds together. She and I were putting our minds together, just tr kind of troubleshooting. And sometimes it's just like that. There is no like, oh, well, look at th this paper and look at this review and look at this study and look at what this other person did. You have to just look at yourself and go, hey, you know, I got to troubleshoot because everybody has individual uh, starting point with their health issues. So um, I know it's on the hour that it's time to go, but do you have any uh, closing words? And before you leave, just tell everybody where they can find you as well. Yeah, you guys can go to my channel. It's just Carnivore Yogi. You can find me there. Um, my Instagram is at carnivore.yogi. And um, I try to interact a lot with my subscribers, followers. I appreciate everybody. Um, it's a pretty amazing, loving community. So I love you guys. And um, yeah, I guess any parting words I have is that, you know, and here's me again, like worried that I'm going to piss someone off or upset someone. Um, I really am just putting out this information out of wanting to help people. Right. And it's all coming right. from a good place in my heart, mm. you know, and I don't have all the answers, mm. but I'm willing yeah. to just keep sharing my journey with you guys in the hopes that maybe, you know, it started as like, oh my gosh, I'm not depressed anymore. Oh my gosh, my yeah. ovarian cysts are totally gone. And wow, maybe somebody else could have results like this. So that's why I started documenting and putting my stuff out there. And now it's kind of taking more turns, but I'm not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, thank Hello. you guys for supporting and watching. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I wasn't aware of you from the start and that you came to me and was so wonderfully wanting to interview me. And thank you, everybody who follows uh, Carnivore Yogi and Sarah to to uh, come over and holler at me. And I want my peeps to go and holler at her because she's got a lot of things going on and she's going to show you guys how to make a meat broth. So go over there and check that out. I don't have a video <laughs> on it. You know, I'm too busy to make a damn video. I got to sit and work my damn horse. So... <laughs> <laughs> so go over to her and learn how to make it. It's, it's really important to get those electrolytes in. And uh, I want to say thank you, Sarah. Um, don't listen to any of the criticism. It, it's never, you never can be uh, completely immune to it. It's, it's going to come. And, uh, but you're going to get more people loving what you're doing than anybody naysaying. So stay strong on the whole thing, sister. Um, so thank <laughs> you. And yeah, guys, check her out. And I'm going to stay live, but Sarah's got to go. And yep. uh, thank you, darling. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. Yeah. We'll do some more collabs again soon for sure. Absolutely. All right. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask, answer more questions here. The chat's still going, right? Yeah. So can we get rid of the Skype thing so I can see the chat? Yes. In a second. I have to be careful because he gets annoyed with me. Even though he's white, even though he's a wife, I'm like his second wife. And then like, I nag him. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was very interesting, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, something to say to the people that still believe that uh, fasting is a good idea. Okay, let me speak plainly. <laughs> if you don't eat, you need energy to work. Otherwise, no worky. Poof. Bye-bye. So, what your body will do in order to gain energy? It will eat itself. <laughs> Jesus! Doesn't take a, and, and, uh, well, a freaking is, degree to the, say that. The thing is, uh, the Greek guy, people think that you're able to break down fatty acids and use them as energy. And so they actually think that you are in ketos ketosis when you take down your... Uh, carbohydrates and it doesn't work that way so we're going to go deep dive yeah and, and we questions. have a we have a saying in greece if my grandmother has balls it will be my grandfather yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> never heard of it but you know you learn something or i learn something every day from the greek guy all right so i'm going to go through some of the questions but i just want to preface now uh, i didn't want to like take over uh sarah's conversation you know and start doing the oh blah 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 and i wanted her to tell her own story but um, now we need you to go and break down this stuff. So essentially the reason why fasting is bad is because you don't actually start breaking down fatty acids. People need to talk about inefficient fat cells if you're estrogen dominant and if you're insulin resistant. 
and if you have leptin resistance, because all of these hormonal issues are going to play a mass and, and uh, thyroid uh, insufficiencies. All of these issues are going to play a role in if you fast and if you're going to damage your metabolism or if you're going to improve it through autophagy and, 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 uh, and, and to lower your insulin if you're having insulin resistance. Um, okay. And while you're doing that, maybe get me some more water too. Okay. But we ha you don't have to go through the questions. Um, real quick. Okay. No fasting. Katie says no fasting. You guys, um, I think Sarah for the first time is getting some blowback. Um, and it is, uh, uh, hard for her cause she's a sweetheart and, uh, it take, you have to build a stomach to, to do this stuff. Cause people come at you hard. Okay, so um, see, I believe hormones regulate. I believe hormones, hormone, reg, hormones regulation, hormone regulation is more important rather than CICU. I don't know what that means. To balance hormones, I guess, has to bring the fat up. So that's what Sarah did. Sarah brought up her fat. She started uh, getting in, getting in more potassium, and also getting in um, bone meat broth, and the swelling dropped. It was like balancing things out taking down this enormous amount of meat that was really hard on the digestive tract. You have to think about, can your body take a pound and a half in a meal, which is ridiculous, break it down. You have enough equipment in your stomach to break down caloric acid and pepsin to break down the protein and then have a strong enough gut wall. And you're not reacting to the uric acid and purines in the red meat that you're taking in and make sure that your kidneys are functioning properly and you're hydrated to be able to eat that an enormous amount of meat and not be ketotic. Cause with that meat, what your body cannot use, it'll turn into glucose and there's no way you're going to keto adapt. I don't care if you make ketones at two o'clock in the afternoon. That's uh, not being ketotic. Paul L says that the uh, sicko is calories in, calories out. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. And I don't remember what was that, what was that referring to? So calories in, calories out is very subjective because a lot of men come up with this ridiculousness because they are not women. Okay. Women have thyroid issues. They have estrogen dominance. They have inefficient fat cells. Men have that too these days. All right. A lot of you men are aromatizing with too much. Uh, hey, Jenny and everyone. Dr. Paul Saladino is on board with low protein and high fat. Sarah's is in a good, in good company. Exactly. Sarah's not used to people saying like, you know, rah, 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 rah. I'm used to it. Even some of her followers are like, oh my God, she's so narcissistic. No, I'm not. I'm just in my fifties. That's what happens when you've been around a planet for a couple days. Okay. Being kicked around your whole life especially as a pro skateboarder with a bunch of guys who didn't want you there. You can't be all soft and squishy all the time. Okay. What do you mean showing blood ketones doesn't necessarily mean you are keto adapted? Okay, great. I definitely Janine. Uh, wait, Hey, um, where can I scroll through the comments on my phone on my phone? Uh, or, can, yes. You or can, maybe you can, uh, Put it on your phone and get, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. All right, Janine, let's talk about this, you guys, because I'm getting some of, uh, of Carnivore Yogi's uh, people. Now, the reason why you're not in ketosis when you have ketones on a uh, blood ketone monitor is if your glucose is high, it counts out, it cancels out ketone viability. The, the brain cannot use both equally the same types of fuel. Turn on with your phone. Okay. Here, you find me. Okay. Um, your body can't use both sources of fuel. Ketones are one. So it's like, okay. Glucose is like using unleaded. Ketones is like using diesel. It's even, it flows more like there's no crashes. It's Same types of fuel. Oh my goodness. The child turn off the volume. Um, so essentially because I've been coaching people for so long using glee, uh, uh, ketone monitors. A lot of people will be, um, no, oh, this is great. Thank you. And you can scroll. Okay. A lot of people will, um, uh, have even in this and Janine, you've got to be in a sweet spot. Your glucose should be between a 70 and 80, right? And then your ketone should be between a 1.8 and a 3.0. And you have to have the symptoms. It's not that simple. And a lot of people will go online where you'll be like, I have 0 0.5 ketones. What do you mean I'm not in ketosis? No, you're not. You can still have thyroid issues, hypoglycemia. All of these blood sugar have insulin resistance on glucose that's too high and ketones that are too long, 
low people will tell you that your your ketotic at a 0.5 ketone that's absolutely ridiculous how do you make, make meat broth you just take lean meat right because there's more potassium in it the fat's going to have a little bit more of those fat soluble vitamins in it and you just slow cook it but with you can you can use a crock pot low temperature five six hours throw some salt up in there make sure you have himalayan salt that's the main salt and that's it it's not complicated um let's see here what if you what if ketones are too high great answer i question chloe hammond so too high ketones means see there's a sweet spot right we've got ketones that are too high up here and we have ketones that are too low so when you're adapted over time because you guys have done this for 12 years non-stop no cheating nothing one time not at all no alcohol no cheese no nuts no wine no no sweet potato nothing just i've done keto omnivore mainly with cruciferous vegetables and way too much spinach because i developed kid kidney crystals from the oxalates but your ketone should be in the sweet spot range, right in here, right? Right in there, right in the middle. If you're too high, it means that your body's, your, the cells aren't taking them, right? The receptors aren't taking in that gasoline. There's no gasoline going into the tank. It's spilling all over the engine. It's, it's not going into the engine. It's just spilling everywhere. And you can still have those symptoms of hypoglycemia with ketones that are too high. You just feel tired and out of it. Uh, SIBO symptoms have improved. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, you guys are going fast. See what symptoms have improved since going high fat keto carnivore. That's what I'm talking about. I don't need to go into the rush. Fix the bacteria imbalance. Blah. Okay, um, let me see. You suggest higher fat, but some of us still have quite a bit of body fat. Okay, Jennifer, let's break this down. The ketogenic diet is tied as, touted as a weight loss diet. Ketogenic diet is a high fat diet. So how do you lose weight eating high fat? Well, fat does not incite insulin, carbs do. Insulin is a storage of, of proteins in the muscle and putting glucose into muscle cell and storing fat. One of the main jobs that insulin does is store fat. So that's incited by eating carbs. Fat does not make you fat. That's why I can eat up to 300 grams of fat and not be fat at freaking almost 53. You drop that insulin and it becomes sensitive. Now that insulin isn't gonna store. When you're resistant, that means like the ketones rising too high, insulin just keeps rising. There's no signal. And the only thing it knows how to do is throw it into your fat cells because fat cells are storage closets for everything, for energy, for toxins, for everything. So you have your fat high and then you become keto adapted and your body uses that fat as ketones. It uses it for your brain. It uses it for your skin, your reproductive system, the inside lining of your, your lungs and your cells. That's where the rest of that fat goes and what your body doesn't use, you poop it out. You don't get fat from eating fat. You get fat from eating, having high too high blood sugar and on carnivore and even keto dong done incorrectly. If your glucose is too high and you present ketones like I'm ketotic because my, my ketones are 2.0. No, if the glucose is high or if it starts climbing, you're going to store that fat because your body now has insulin and glucose. There's glucose all in the bloodstream and that insulin is going to take that glucose and the fat and store it. And that's why the glucose has to be low, ketones have to be high, and you have to actually use the ketones. Because if you have leaky gut, you can lose those ketones in the toilet. You'll be like, look, my number says that I'm in ketosis. No, because your urine strip is turning purple. Purple means you're losing ketones. It doesn't mean you're adapted. Okay, 100 grams of butter makes me nauseous. That's your gallbladder, straight up, point blank period. How do I get around, how do I get around it? I start to eat it's oh, uh, suet the, uh, around the uh, kidneys fat and pork fat instead of butter. Does this mean I have histamine issues? No, see, it's not enough bile. Exactly. Why aren't carnivore people talking about this? You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to talk about like you try to eat all that fat and you feel nauseous. I mean, uh, histamine intolerance shouldn't create nausea. Typically, if you up your fats. So Paul, what you need to do is to make sure that it's not any type of histamine is you need to go and experiment with all fats that are long chain fats that are not short chain fats like coconut oil. So go and try those fats. You eat a bunch of it, go over 200 grams to give you an eye, uh, eyeball amount of 200, 12 tablespoons only hit you at, at 167 grams of fat. So you got to eat a lot of fat. And what people try to do is eat a bunch of, um, a steak that are like ribeyes to get more fat. But the problem is you got to eat more protein to get to the fat. 
Now you're eating too much protein. Now you're putting pressure on the kidneys because if you don't have uh, high functioning kidneys, if there's any issues with your kidneys that you don't know, because nobody knows they have problems with their kidneys. People don't know they have crystals or low kidney function or the GR, the, the albumin creatinine uh, ratios are off. They don't know that. What can make your ketones fall to only uh, one to uh, 0.6? Um, not eating enough fat, that's the main reason. Uh, people who are doing keto omnivore are using coconut oil, not eating enough fat, eating too much protein. Too much protein will spike your blood sugar. And when your blood sugar is high, the brain's like, hmm, sugar, which is like a super drug. Or I use ketones and I only know the super drug, you know, so I'm just going to go towards the, the, you know, the super drug. Whereas ketones, the body has to learn how to make the enzymes to break down and convert the ketones into acetoacetate to get into the Krebs cycle so your body can use it. So that's a process. It doesn't happen right away and you have to have a very good high functioning gallbladder. So um, uh, sometimes people's uh, ketones are dropping because A, they have gallbladder issues and their bodies not even break down ketones. B, their sleep sucks because if your sleep sucks, your body's like, I'm not making ketones. That's a lot of work. Um, stress can do that. Uh, an inflammatory response to food can drop your ketones. Uh, and uh, just one night of not sleeping can drop your ketones. Uh, eating a food that's in inflammatory, two days later your body can respond and have an inflammatory reaction that can drop your ketones. So I hope that helps. Uh, yeah, cut out them nuts. Cut out them nuts, them nuts, these nuts. Jennifer Angus, it seems just scary, but it actually works. I did see any weight loss. I didn't see any weight loss until I finally upped my fat consistently, then started losing slowly and steadily after that. So listen to what Deborah is saying. Like she didn't drop the fat until she actually keto adapted. Because if you're not adapted and you try to keep your fat low, guess what? Women that men don't say there, you're damaging your, your, your thyroid. This is going to, uh, the thyroid controls. It's one of the master controller of your fat burning system. The reason why T3 drops, right? Your thyroid hormone is because the body is trying to protect itself. When you're not getting enough gasoline into the tank and you're not getting carbs from meat, it's negligible, right? You get like 1.1 grams of carb in a meat. You're not going to restore the glycogen storages on carbs in meat. And you're not going to restore your glycogen storages in muscle from gluconeogenesis of the meat that you're eating. You're in this purgatory zone of destroying your endocrine system. And so people start eating all this meat, they're tired because they're not in ketosis and they're not getting any carbs in. And why no one talks about this really bugs me because everyone's like, oh my gut feels so much better on carnivore. So then people don't consider what they're doing to their endocrine system in time. And men, they don't know, they don't know shite. And to be honest, they don't think about the men that are having the same issues that women have, which is thyroid problems, which is more of a female problem because of the estrogen dominance. But men start to develop thyroid issues as well, gallbladder issues as well, doing these diets. It's, if your meats are too lean and you don't eat enough fat, you can create problems with the stones in your gallbladder because the body's not releasing bile. Like people aren't making no sense. It trips me out. All right. Uh, Jenna Lee says, if I have consistently elevated levels of cortisol, will that affect my level of ketosis? Yeah, you won't adapt. High levels of cortisol means gluconeogenesis. It's adrenaline, norepinephrine, cortisol. Cortisol breaks down amino acids to turn into glucose to raise your blood sugar. Um, and that's what cortisol does. And it creates too much of an inflammation. Inflammation is where the white blood cell can't go in there and heal. But if you have inflammation for too long, it starts to tear down tissues in the body and the body won't adapt. If the body feels stressed at all, like my new horse, y'all got a new horse, I rescued a horse. <laughs> if the body feels stressed at all, it, it like, you know, like the horse can colic. It's just like, it's nervous, it's gonna colic, which means like stomach issues and ulcers. And that's the same thing with humans. If you're too stressed, the ketones are like, you know, no, nah, I'm, I'm not feeling it. I'm not gonna make them and I'm not. Uh, I'm so scared of gaining weight. That's why I haven't upped my fat. It's not upping your fat that will make you gain weight. When, you're when your T3 drops, your metabolism goes <clears throat> That means if you ate like air, you gain weight. So I get a lot of women who en end up eating under 1,000 calories because they're afraid of gaining weight. That just ruins your metabolism. I mean, you put your immune system at really bad risk of doing that. My, um, and people are like, oh my God, well, you are, you are this. People say, oh, you look young because I'm almost 53. People are like, oh, you look young because you're black. And I'm like, what does that have to do with my body composition? 
because you've got same hormonal issues. It doesn't matter what ethnic ethnicity you are as a female, that when you are, well, I'm not even middle-aged, I'm old now, right? I'm, I'm, I'm like in the old bracket where they call you old, where you get like ARP <laughs> senior benefits. <laughs> um, let me see here. Uh, makeup addict, uh, 26 is I'm, I'm wait. Most women gain weight easily, but it's truly, it's truly amazing how more fat makes you lose fat, more fat lose, makes you lose weight. And the reason why you don't uh, gain weight when you're finally ketotic is because this, this is a restaurant of your belly. This restaurant, this 7-Eleven, yo, Quickie Mart. When you're not eating, the body goes, oh, well, it's just like, let's make these inefficient fat cells. Let's make them efficient by using them as energy. The body doesn't like to burn fat because that fat just sits in your body and it doesn't go anywhere. Fat does not break your metabolism. Muscles do because muscles need a lot of care and tending to, and you got to feed them. They are very metabolically active, but if you don't take care of that system, the body would rather burn muscle first because it's expensive. It keeps all the electric bills in the house real high. Fat, you can have all the lights on in the house with fat and not have a high electric bill. So when the body's trying to lose weight, it'll drop muscle first and it'll save the fat for last because guess what? If we're healthy, we got vitamins in our fat. If you're not toxic, you got a lot of healthy stuff in the fat cells. So if you're starving to death, the body will get muscle, rid of muscle first, and it'll burn the fat last. So when people don't eat, it wrecks their, uh, their, it wrecks their metabolism, especially the thyroid. And that's when women are like, I eat anything and I just start gaining weight. The answer isn't to eat less. That makes you more fat right? That makes you more estrogen dominant. That gives you crepey skin and, and bags under your eyes and your kidney starts freaking out. That's what gives you crepey skin is not eating food and keeping your calories low. Sorry guys, I'm going off on a rant. I've been taking ancestral supplements, colostrum. Do you, where is it there? Ancestral is the shite. You guys, sorry. I got a code there. It's the only affiliate program I have because I've said no to like 300 people because you can't get better than this company. It's all glandulars from head to toe, not that nail to n- nose to tail nonsense. They do brain all the way down, testicles for men with the, with the, you know, with the testosterone. Okay. Let me see. Yes, it's true. Fat makes your, your pants fall off. Yes. Stephanie, stop. If you are not old, you make it all of us. Wait, wait, wait. You make, wait, wait. Oh, the comments are going too fast. Okay. You make all of us regain the, regain youth. Thank you. I mean, I'm really silly. I get hyper. You guys, when I'm in my everyday life, this isn't like, I'm not acting like this. I'm by myself chilling. I'm researching, working with clients, going to the gym and, you know, taking care of my mom. Like that's my life. I don't like, I don't party in LA. (laughs) I don't do any of that stuff. I don't get into all the fights that go on in the whole like diet community. I just do my own thing. Okay, what do you recommend eating for easy eat? What, uh, what do you recommend eating for early morning workouts, if if anything at all? So yes, uh, to protect your adrenals, right? Um, let's see. If you could go back seven years, would you ever never started, never started intermittent fa- fasted? Uh, intermittent fasting, dumbest thing I ever did. Oh, if you could go back, exactly. Thank you, Roslyn. Because all of these influencers are like, it's so good. Eat one meal a day. It doesn't hurt your body. There's these studies that say this. Then people believe in that nonsense and completely wreck their body. And then I get real people, real human beings, like real ones, telling you that it's contrary, that they were just uh, destroying themselves. So as a pre-workout, what you do is if you're going to, uh, like, let's say I'm getting up, I hit the gym at five or six in the morning and I can't eat a full breakfast, you just take something small. This is to tell the hypothalamus, pituitary, pituitary adrenal access that food is coming in so you don't have this over adrenal response of cortisol. You want cortisol, but you don't want your adrenals to work too hard because people develop adrenal insufficiencies or they start to have adrenal issues with high cortisol or inverted cortisol. And so you eat something small. If you don't have a histamine to yolks, it's great because it's soft, it's a fatty protein, and you could have like one yolk with two tablespoons of fat. It's nothing. It's enough to tell the adrenals, hey, adrenals, I'm not doing an extended, uh, extended fast. So you don't have to slow down my metabolism and drop my T3. 
and then you would just go to the gym and come back and have a proper breakfast. That's an easy solution if you have gym, gym early, early in the morning. Steph, you suggest pinches of potassium citrate throughout the day. Is there any average total for the day that to aim for? Um, from potassium citrate, since I don't know for sure, this is all new and I don't think you'll get it from anyone else how to do it. It's going to be about uh, a little bit over a thousand milligrams per day. Um, and that does not include, thank you. Uh, things like, uh, it's probably hot in here, huh? huh? Can you leave the door open for a second? Uh, or is it okay? Yeah. Mm. That does not include sodium, uh, salt, sorry. And um, because there's a difference between you when you're weighing out salt. Because people started to, people were doing tea, two teaspoons, three teaspoons of salt a day, and this is destroying their, their sodium potassium pump balance. Um, oh, I'm so glad you're back because I can't, you know, my knee's killing me. Y'all know I've had, I used to be a pro skater, so my knee, I've had 10 surgeries, so when I stand too long, my knee hurts. Hello, Hadi, what are your thoughts on, uh, cre cre what, creatine? So you're gonna have to rewrite that. What about, you mean creatinine? You mean creatine? Creatine, I, don't, I think. Creatine? Yeah. Like the supplement? No. no. Hell no. No. What about magnesium torate? No, uh, magnesium glymate, gly glycinate is more bioavailable to the body. That's why most people suggest uh, magnesium glycinate. And if they can't, some people can't tolerate it, so they go to uh, 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 malate. Those are the two that I keep hearing that people do well on. So there you go with that. How do I cl calculate macros? I got it. My knee, I don't know why I'm doing this. I got to freaking go move a horse tomorrow, 1,400 pounds, and clean out his huge stuff. I have an idea. What? Yeah, bring it to the spot. Oh. Yes. We have some lines over here, people. You guys want to see how big I am? Stand next to me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not tall, people. Well, so stop being I'm 5'11", 6, with my high heels, 6'12". 6'12", okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let me see. Macros. Okay, so you guys, I made this very simple. You guys know I was on the doctor's. People follow me know I was on the Dr. Oz show. They're like, how do you simplify it? I'm like, just use your hands, right? Three ounces is about three fingers of protein. Three ounces of protein from a fatty meat is going to be between, you know, negligible uh, 12 to 20 grams of protein, like chicken thigh to salmon to red beef to lean beef to, to fatty meats. It's going to be waver between those numbers. So if you do three ounces measured cook with the thickness the thickness, wait a minute, so I'll drop that water, of the palm of your hand, that's about the protein size if you are under five foot nine or what is it in centimeters, 173? No, five nine, 173? Uh, You're Greek, come on, quick, quick, huh? Around 180. No, that's not five nine, 180 is taller. Oh, yeah, 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 173. He's forgetting. No, I'm... You come from Europe. I'm not Shame used to you. Yeah. <laughs> Same on you, American people, that you haven't uh, evolved the to the common word that everybody uses centimeters and meters. The metric yeah. system. Yeah. Damn it. I, know, I right? had to say that. I know. APM here, brother sugar is 60. Should I eat fat? Well, Nancy. Oh, Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. How do you feel, Nancy? Uh, it's, it's low. Here's the thing. Your blood sugar can be... See, Nancy's been doing keto for a while, so I know her. She's on my course. Forgot to say I'm on a course. Keto course. Did you put that information up? Put that information up. What information? I got some new people here. Shoot, I got like 160 something people watching this stuff. 150? Yeah, I know. My course, the website and stuff. Oh. Okay. Um, you guys, don't forget to like up the stream. We got 148 people here and 81 likes. You guys, I don't look to see who's liking, but I tell you one thing people will find me. Um, let me sound more humble. People will, f I'm just hyper. This is what ketones do to the brain, okay? They make you excited and hyper. I, um, people have a hard time, they can't read that chat, you need to put that in yellow. People have a hard time, um, finding me, uh, because I didn't try to advertise myself and clickbait and monetize and I buried myself from not doing that. So when people like up the stream, it helps people find me when I go live because people have had a hard time. They're not getting their notifications. Uh, 20 grams per meal. Jennifer, it depends on how tall you are. If you're, I'm like five foot three. So if you're five foot three, um, I would say between uh, 50 and 55 grams of protein a day, a day. So I'm gonna have like, you know, 15 to 18 grams of protein per meal. Sometimes I go higher, but I've got enough stomach acid. 
I've got really stable blood sugar. Uh, I have a lot of developed GLUT4 receptor development in my muscle, right? So when you have muscle, you develop the ability to clear out glucose a lot easier than somebody who does not. So when my protein gets a little higher than 60, it doesn't pop me out of ketosis, but not that you have to have all the equipment so you don't pop out. Uh, Deborah's saying that my consultations are packed with info. Yeah, you guys do consultation. I forgot. Yes, I do consultations. I need to go home tonight soon and open up the calendar because I'm full booked right now. But um, I don't talk this hyper, you guys. I talk like a normal human being and calm down and talk real, real talk with the individual. Live streams brings out a different person than me. I'm just saying. Uh, let's see. You are amazing. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Diana. I appreciate it. Uh, can you describe heart palpitations? Yes. Karina, you're coming up with great questions. So heart palpitations are, you feel your heartbeat. It's like, dunk, dunk. It's like, dunk, 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 dunk. Trust me, I know what they feel like because I've done keto for 12 years and I wasn't careful for my electrolytes probably in the first six years. So I developed really low magnesium deficiency. Uh, so you feel like the heart's going like, gunk, gunk. Gunk, gunk. Normally when you're sitting, you don't feel the heart. You don't feel that it's beating. When you have benign heart palps, there's not enough oxygen to the heart. So it goes dunk, 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 dunk. It feels terrible. And when they get severe, you can't breathe very well. You start uh, <clears throat> talking like this, right? It's not dangerous at first, but years of heart palps can create damage to the heart. Not in like six months or not even in three years, but over time it can damage the heart. How much protein is in meat broth? About seven grams per cup. It's four to seven. It depends. They can't see much. See, okay. Okay. Here we go. There's my website right there. stephanieperson.com. My Instagram is all free content. You don't got to pay for nothing there, which is Stephanie Ketogenic. And my Facebook is all, all my Facebook fan page is Stephanie, the business person. If you guys just need, I do daily stuff on everything. We're talking, you know, do we need fiber? What happens? Why do people develop loose stool on carnivore? If you're going to, if you can't do carnivore, can you keto carnivore? If you do keto omnivore, what if you got histamine intolerance? If you do low carb, high fat, if you're doing low carb, high fat, because you have hypoglycemia or thyroid, how do you do it? If you got histamine um, on these, these places, I can explain to you how to address these things or like water. You don't drink freaking one liter. People are like, I drink 18 ounces when I wake up in the morning. I was like, that's dumb. Sip it. That's not very smart because it takes 45 minutes for your body to hydrate. So you've got to sip it slowly. Don't overwhelm the system. You're making me the jolly brown giant now. Okay. Um, Facebook is the best they Oh, you have a Facebook course. Hello. Is a Facebook course. It's not up there. Oh, you have 70 person.com. So I have a Facebook course, you guys, and I started it because I had an open private Facebook group and there was so many people blasting me with questions. I was like, okay, first of all, there's too many people. And everybody was like vomiting their opinion and people were fighting. You know how it is in those, those groups. So I was like, I'm going to put together a course where you learn. And I did this, I did a keto challenge. It was just an educational challenge. I did it like three years ago. People loved it. And I just put that into a course. It takes me three weeks, three weeks to research one subject. And then I post it. Uh, and then we have uh, course lessons throughout the day on the weekends. I do 10 to 15 minutes, although I keep going over time cause I'm an idiot, but 10 to 15 minute, mini consultations through Google Hangouts on the course page. It's free with the course. And the course is super dumb, cheap. Like I charge too little for how hard I work on it. So I'm signing up. I need to be in the course. Yeah, it's really cool, Natalia. I'm almost scared because I'm getting more men members. I'm like, because like I'll give homework and I'll review it. Like everybody, there's an ask Steph question day. And I'm like, oh my God, there's like 500 questions. <laughs> no wonder I've been going to bed at 1 a.m. Uh, okay. As uh, Corinna says, right, uh, her Facebook course is amazing. Uh, amazing. Oh, there's a K in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I used to be in uh, Meet RX and changed to Stephanie's Facebook instead. 
best move ever. Oh, Natalia, R okay, she, RG. I was like, who's RG? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I got some new people and I've gotten uh, some of Sarah's people coming over to me. Uh, she, Sarah was sending people over because she wasn't able to answer some of the questions um, that I'm able to answer just because I've been doing this for so many years and have run into the electrolyte problems with people from the very beginning of doing anything that's low carb. Uh, you might need a teaching assistant. I know I do. I, I'm like overwhelmed, you guys. I do a lot. And I don't make money and I don't, I mean, you guys like, uh, I was like, I had to stop looking at the comments on that video with the, the, um, interview she did with me because people are like, Oh my God, I hate her. And I was like, well, if we actually spoke it, spoke face to face, you'd probably love me because the persona that you see on a live stream is not the persona that you see in real, in real live person. And I do care and people do get hurt. And I just say it like, I mean it like Wendy Williams. Although she doesn't say it like she means it. Uh, what about the 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal for protein synthesis? Uh, this is all nonsense. And the reason why I call it nonsense is because this is a theory and not a proven science. You also have to consider people with hypochlorhydria. If your stomach acid is low and you don't have enough pepsin, you're not breaking down that 30 grams of protein in a meal. In what hunter-gatherer society would you be eating that much protein every meal, every day? It's very hard for the body to break down. Your kidneys have to filtrate all of that. It's not that simple. So we just got to be careful for this dogmatic, you know, blanketed, generalized statements about nutrition in the bodybuilder community. There's a bodybuilder that reached out to me yesterday. He's pretty famous. He's like, Steph, I need help. My body is wrecked from uh, doing all of these. He went to go to the Arnold, you know, there, there was the Arnold competition and he had to cancel it because of the whole coronavirus thing, um, which is another interesting thing I should talk about your immune system. Um, but uh, he's, his, he's wrecked because he's been doing the 30 grams or higher, of course, of protein that's very dogmatic and you have to do the window of protein synthesis, synthesis 30 minutes after a workout. All of this is, is too general and everybody's body is doing things differently according to the levels of health that you have. Uh, our, in our fallen world, most people don't want the truth. They are addicted to their own truth. Yeah, and thank you, Aqua v Vitae. Is that you say? Aqua Vitae. Vitae, sorry. Um, I think the problem is, is that when you go online, you want everybody to be your friend. And if people talk like, thank you, is that for me? Oh God, that hurts when my knee is killing me. Um, I think that people, and I'm going to continue with the, continue with the uh, answers. I think that people, thank you, this is really good. <laughs> I can see a lot better. Um, I think that people, when you go online as a guru, you want everybody to like you. So you just are nice. But you can hurt people by being nice. You've got to be tough. People will challenge you. What kind of education do you have? Who do you think you are? And if you're not confident you'll get run right over in life so i've decided to be myself and people either love you or they won't but in any case the information i give might save your ass let me see um i'm the medical medium diet at wait i'm on the i've not even i have not heard of this medical medium diet after six months of keto and carnivore my adrenals and thyroid got messed up yep upping the fat and supplementing with minerals didn't help either well it's not about just upping fat and so, so eating minerals you have to first of all you have to make sure you go to bed on time you know why because our bodies follow a circadian rhythm i'm too close I don't like that um, you have to you have to follow a circadian rhythm. You have to realize what's going on with your insulin, what's going on with your hormones. Just eating food and taking supplements is not the solution. If you don't sleep, you're not going to adapt. You can be insulin resistant overnight. This is going to affect your adrenals. This is going to affect your thyroid. If your electrolytes are off, you taking some supplemental potassium is not the solution. Body knows nature. If you can get potassium from real food, your body's going to be able to partition off and utilize it more effectively. People are like, oh, so magnesium, um, uh, tor or tor wait, I forgot the name of it. Um, there's so many different types of magnesium. If you're taking, different, let's say, no, it wasn't malate. It was a, a torate, I think. If you're taking certain types of magnesium that are not 
being able to be broken down and into the bloodstream uh, quickly for your body to use, utilize, it doesn't work. You could take Synthroid or Thyroxin or even, an, um, or even uh, uh, Armor as a uh, supplemental th thyroid, but that's not your body making thyroid hormone. It's taking in exogenously. So you don't want to have to take a supplement. That's the reason why I start taking eating avocados doing carnivore because I don't want to take potassium citrate as a supplement. Um, so you got to be, huh? Powerade. Aqua vite. Where's the uh, comment? Powerade. Where is it? Torate. Yeah. Thank you. Aqua vite. Thank you. Um, thank you for giving true, accurate information. I'm so tired of trying to s sift through jumbled and contradictory information online. Thank you, Cynthia. And look, you know, what's been going on in my week has been exhausting. Nobody knows what's been going on. When I do these lives, there's so many questions I've got to answer. And I just, I squeeze every drop of energy I have. Sometimes the Greek guys see me just... We turn off the live stream and I flop over on a chair. You know, my knee is killing me because I've had 10 surgeries on my left knee and I was on crutches for four years and I've been on my leg too much the last couple weeks and uh, it's not it's not getting better. I have to sleep and I have to get off of it. So uh, that really, you know, puts me like this when I'm in a live, like my knee hurts right now. Like half the time I'm like, my knee hurts. Oh no, I've got to go rake like you know, 50 feet tomorrow, my knee's not gonna, it's not gonna heal, you know? Um, you guys, it's a long story, but I rescued this horse and the man who had it before, uh, he didn't abuse the horse, but he abused it. <laughs> I love this horse. You guys, I'm not going off subject, I'll answer the questions, but I just wanted to get out of LA. I was sick of being, there's such a homeless po uh, population growing here. And there's so many, you know, like people who are so affected by the fakery here. I needed to find a way to be outside, connect to the circadian rhythm. So I innocently was just going to like rent a horse a couple times a week. It's called leasing a horse. And I kept pa passing this horse that was, was, uh, sort of being neglected. And, um, long story short, I bought him and I can't afford a horse. <laughs> And I don't, didn't want a horse because I know that I would dedicate every single minute of my life to help him and, and protect him. And my leg's getting screwed up trying to fix uh, a new place for him. Long story short, I've got to fix a new stall and I've got it all do with back breaking work. Uh, thank you for giving true... Oh, I read that. Okay, I got to sign for, up for your course. Tired of trying to figure out all this out on my own. It's really hard, Miss P. People call me that because my last name is Person. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's really, really confusing on like, how much protein, what type of protein, you know, I need to get potassium in, how do I get it in? Should I not do carnivore? Should I, you know, add an avocado in? Because it, in this, I don't call it a community because if you decide to add in an avocado, they're no longer calling you carnivore. It's just so weird. Let people just need to do what they need to do and stop trying to put labels on stuff. That's what the vegan whole world ran into that whole dogmatic thing of people trying to say you're not this or not that how long will it take for me to fat adapt transitioning from carnivore so basically generally you can stay carnivore and still be keto by calling it keto carnivore and it goes in three month chunks your gut health right do you have a gallbladder do you have enough stomach acid because if you can't break down my pace if you have low hcls if you have any gallbladder sludge to the sli slightest or you have leaky gut, you may not absorb that fat or may not be able to break down that fat to even convert into ketones. You have to have good liver function and you've got to be able to sleep. You got to make sure your blood sugar is stable. So everybody's different. Like I've got to tell people, you got to reset, like you're you know, putting your workout here and take down the volume and don't do hit right now. You know, that's going to be cortisol driven and adrenal driven. And, and if your body's adrenal driven, your ketones become unviable. It's really kind of, it's simple for me, but then it becomes complicated for somebody trying to do it for the first time. Thank you. What, what time is it? Well, uh, right now we are uh, live streaming for one hour, 
50 minutes. Can you just tell me the time? Jeez. 5.43. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. He's like, oh, we've been sleep streaming this long. That doesn't tell me what time it is. Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hope you got new nice Hello. Humper Thunder. Yes, you guys. It's a long story. I'm going to talk about it later. I'm going to talk everything about this horse that I saved and how it's affecting my life, but not because I get tired of just talking about keto and carnivores. So freaking boring. I mean, for me. Uh, for and me. you start, uh, you have to start your Patreon uh, uh, channel for uh, Thunder. Yes. So I'm going to put it, I'm, you guys, sure. if you, if you go to my old videos, a lot of them not, are not monetized. I barely make any money, clearly, obviously. And um, I don't sell products or anything like that. And I've had to actually start clickbaiting because if you don't do that, if you don't monetize every video and clickbait, YouTube will drop you. That's how I can have get almost a hundred, you know, I'm spending another thousand dollars a month on keeping a horse. And, um, and yeah, so it's for my horse. It's not for me. I don't need money for me. I only need money for that. My new boyfriend. Uh, so if you guys want to don't, I don't have a Patreon yet though, but if you guys want to help uh, donate so I can keep boarding him at a new facility because, uh, the owner was being very abusive, very, very abusive. And the place is, um, run in a way that I find is not, I really want to just say the truth, but not today. We'll keep it polite today about that place. Uh, there's a flu study that says that ketogenic diet increases immunity and against, against viruses. Yeah. I mean, right now I think that I'm an N equals one experiment because nobody's done it as strict as I have. So, you know, people will like, you know, go on a cruise or, you know, it'll be their birthday and they'll go off. And that kind of switches that, that the way that your body will revert back to its old, the, uh, the old way of using, uh, food as fuel. And, um, uh, yeah, so it's very interesting to see like what happens when you're fully ketotic. You have to be disciplined. People aren't disciplined, so they oscillate, they go off and on. But a lot of you guys have histamine intolerance. And so what better way to manage your histamine, your gut strength, your hormones, um, your telomeres and age backwards. Yo, you guys, I'm almost 50 freaking three. If you look at all my old videos, you can see stress on my face still because I wasn't doing things properly, but now I got it. Okay. This isn't keto related, but I'm feeling love. Aww. Uh, freaking love you. Thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you, Chloe Hammond. And that, you know, I'm a very emotional person. I come across as a dick, but I don't have a dick. Thank God. Um, let me see. Uh, so I appreciate uh, when people, I just appreciate people who understand me. A lot of people don't get the way that I talk and act because they don't know where I'm coming from. They don't know my background. I've, been, I've had my ass served. Okay, there's a, wait, uh, will drinking broth be enough balanced electrolytes without taking supplements if you have? Mm, I don't know if you're having any problems with your uh, sodium potassium balance. I don't know. I don't know if you've got leaky gut. I don't know. It could be, and it could be not. And that's why trying to figure out your lifestyle to figure out what's going on with you would be easier. Some people ask me so much, so many questions on all social media platforms. I'm like, but a sentence isn't going to help me know your background. So a course page could be help to, helpful to learn or an, even a consultation will help. So if I know what's going on, like, okay, with carnivore yogi, I gave her a consultation. I said, your electrolytes are off. This is what you need to do. Boom. She lost the 10 pounds of water weight. She's feeling a lot better because I was able to actually talk to her. So then it was like instantly she felt better. And if I didn't talk to her, I wouldn't know. There was one client I had. She thought her electrolytes were off. It wasn't her electrolytes. It was her, she was, she was hypoglycemic. I was like, no, that's not your electrolytes, honey. You're not, no, you don't have low blood pressure. Like all those little nuances. Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have low blood pressure? You know, how much sodium do you take? What do you have gut issues? Like there's so many things to, to consider. Why do people choose to do keto diet? Sorry if it is a stupid question. That's not a stupid question. Um, uh, people choose to do the ketogenic diet because the standard American diet created a uh, completely destruction of destroying their health. Uh, we are, uh, mostly carnivore. We're omnivorous, but we are mostly carnivore and, uh, we're predators. We have eyes in the front of our face. And I know that cause horses have what? Oops. Eyes on the sides. These are prey animals. See? Anyway. Um, so essentially we are designed to go into ketosis when we're in a famine mode, which as hunter gatherers, we often were, your brain needs to survive. And if you don't have carbohydrate, you got to think about it. Like, yo, I went to Africa. I was like, I didn't know it. it uh, 
A lot of you guys are Northern European. Not all of you. A lot of you are above the equator. What are you going to do in Europe? I lived in Europe for just about 16 years. I lived in Sweden, 11. When you live in, when, a, when you're living in a Nordic country, ain't nothing growing. Potatoes come from South America. Like all these people are like, eat potatoes. I'm like, no potatoes. There's not going to be berries growing. You are going to have to eat fish and eat and hunt. People don't understand this kind of stuff. So when we become modern humans, we damage everything. We have genetically modified plants. Our gut wall is weak. We take antibiotics. We have, um, we destroy, we're, we're toxic. So what keto does is put your body, it takes the flames down. Ketones are much easier to use in the long time. Basically ketones, if you have a fireplace and you're trying to heat a house, using carbs is like putting paper into a fireplace. How do you keep a house hot on a bunch of paper? It burns really fast and it burns out. And every time that fire burns out, your metabol metabolism takes a hit. But if you're using ketones, that's like big logs. Now you can put six logs on a fire and leave your house. It'll stay hot for hours. That's a ketone. And when your body's like this in this homeostatic balance, you don't, you, you fix the disease that once was created by eating a bunch of carbs that we never were supposed to be eating in the first place. Breads and bread crackers don't grow on trees, honey child. There are no ice cream bushes. They're not. Sorry, I have to go. Thank Jesus. You. I know. Thank you, Deborah. I think that the Greek guy will take over since she's got to go. Thank you so much for helping out, Deborah. I really appreciate it. Uh, we don't even have a secret exactly for for hind gut and for uh, hind gut fermentation. Like animals can create fatty acid off of um, uh, 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 breaking down grass and use it as fuel. We can't do that. Fiber goes right through us. We can't freaking convert that into a fatty acid that's usable for energy. Bunch of cellulose. Oh no. Nah. Let me see. Mm, we're kind of, we have very acidic stomachs. We're very, very acidic. That's why when you guys have low stomach acid, you run into problems. You run into problems to break down fiber. You run into problems to break down protein. You run into problems, people. We're even going beyond the gut strength. Either, even hypochlorhydria is bad. Okay, I need to come down. I'm getting a headache. Okay. It's because I'm forcing out energy I didn't have because I stayed up till one last night working on the course page after working with my horse all day. I'm just saying, moving him. Okay, that was happening to me up three, three, four times since I started Keto Carnivore. My sleep is so much better. And now I'm only getting up. Well, she was waking up a lot. I'm only getting up once a night now. So I need to slow down. But I am, <laughs> but I'm having mild, pal mild palpitations and not sure why. You went too slow. <laughs> I know, right? I'm just fast. So your your heart palpitations are probably because you're not getting either uh, sodium or potassium. Oh, sorry, sodium, potassium, magnesium, or all of them, or water. So here's where if I actually talk to LVNCSR, I would be able to to nail it down immediately, like I did with Carnivore Yogi, and make suggestions based on my experience, and do an N equals one experiment and see if it works. Washington County, County News, News Station, Station, Utah said, hello everyone, what up? Hello Utah. I know, okay, uh, is there any more questions? I don't think so. We still got this live audience here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for everyone who came live to the stream uh, with- It really, was refreshing, refreshing. Right, it's yeah. really refreshing. But y'all wear me out, I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm not, my brain is, see, this is what, ke, ke, this is another thing. Somebody's like, oh, why are you being ketosis all the time? My brain, they always talk about how your brain repairs itself being ketotic. My mental acuity under extreme stress and poor sleep is, I've never had this before in my life. Never, never, right? Hormonal balance, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, like my brain cognition, you know, taking down that candida overgrowth I had, not having hypoglycemia or adrenal insufficiencies, not having to worry about my thyroid. I can't explain my skin, the skin, the fat and the dermis. Like, look at that. You get old, I don't care how old you are. That skin get wrinkly. That get like dried out. People don't understand. They're like, oh my God, black don't crack. Yes, it does. Y'all just, y'all people with lighter skin can't see it. You want to go on, on be there, Greek guy? <laughs> yes, hello. Oh. He's your white guy. She's um, kissing me now, not her boyfriend. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
people think of lighter skin that if you have brown skin that you don't wrinkle. Yes, you do. You get crepey skin, you get, you know, metabolic damage, just like anybody of any color skin. It does not matter. And the fat, the fat that I eat, I eat about 250 to 260 grams of fat a day. My skin is so like, I don't want to be paper thin lean. By the way, somebody's like, oh my God, Stephanie, you're getting chubby. No, I was like, yo, yeah, you in were, your dreams. Anyway, I was like, yo, you got a menstrual cycle and you get a little water retentant. Now they think you're getting fat. <laughs> Jeez, I should stop wearing half tops. And the reason, or the reason why I wear sports bras for the new people is because I wanted a whole series of being on the internet for 20 years and watching my body oh, as I get older. If you're going to preach health, you better be of health. I just see all the bruises of my arm from uh, Thunder getting scared because somebody started playing drums real loud and he freaked out. Uh, that's another story. <laughs> He's not story. into heavy metal? Oh, Jesus. that's another story. Somebody brought, brought a drum set around horses. It's called the sound bath. And I was walking you know, him yeah. and he was like, ah! <laughs> uh, money is an issue for me. Would one, I would want, would one consult and a follow up be enough if that is all I can afford? Um, I think it's a start. I think that it's all that I want. It's up to you, but it will be packed. If you see a lot of packed information, take a uh, carnivore yogi, Sarah. She came to me. I was able to recognize the issues and I was able to help her immediately. It's very rare that I can't help someone in some degree. I've got a good track record. I mean, could I, could I be wrong sometimes? A hundred percent, but it's not, it, y'all have a lot of the same issues. I was able to distinguish with one client, no, it's not your electrolytes, it's hypoglycemic. Because she started like trying to pound down electrolyte drinks and products. That didn't work. And then she did like, she broke her carnivore and did coconut water. That didn't work. I said, no, it's hypoglycemia. She's like, really? And I was like, yes. She had also done the fasting. So I'm going to go and have her online to talk about her fasting that destroyed her adrenal system. And she developed physiological insulin resistance and hypoglycemia from fasting on carnivore. Let me see, what, am I missing something? Okay. Uh, I'm kind of getting worn out, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I don't know, we have uh, some more questions and comments, like- Okay, uh, like the last ones was, uh, uh, I was getting up to three, four times a night when I was vegan, exactly. Sarah's audio is clipping. That's someone that is uh, watching from the beginning that the audio was clipping. How, how, it get better. Did you fix, how long was the audio <laughs> yeah. clipping for? Uh, like the first three minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're saying it now. That's where, uh... yeah, because he's watching from the beginning and he just texted. He just... Uh... No, live streams don't make you do that. But we don't have uh, Sarah right now, so... I don't know. Not you guys, posted. it's not clipping, is it? Anybody who stayed here for the whole thing, was it? How long did it? The audio be weird for? And if I criticize the Greek guy for the audio, he's gonna get mad at me. Yes, like <laughs> mad. But anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, Redman is horrible. Love. Cal yeah, Redman doesn't do the job. Everybody's doing Redman, and I tried, and I started getting heart palp. As soon as I went back to the Himalayan, I have. I do both. I actually have all three, but I do mainly Himalayan salt and then uh, the the gray salt, which is the red mint. I mean the Celtic salt. Generally, apparently, stevia powder spikes insulin. Uh, insulin. No, it doesn't. Supposedly, liquid is a bit better. No, it doesn't. It does only in a few people. It's very rare that it does, but it does, but it doesn't do it to everyone. So we just got to be careful with the blanket statements. But it's an oxalate, so maybe that's why you shouldn't take it. What low oxalate veggies can give give potassium? No, onions is too many carbs, mushrooms, no, candida. Um, why don't you just do meat broth? Um, avocado, you probably can't do. There's not a lot of potassium in Christopher, so that's a no. Spinach, but spinach is oxalate, but you know that. Uh, it's only going to be 75 degrees here tomorrow. I'm going to be horseback riding. Really? Are you, oh, you're in Utah. I'm going horseback riding to in Cali, and it's going to be hotter than 70s. California beats Utah. Right? According to yeah. weather. Well, you know, <laughs> I love Utah, weather. but I don't like cold weather. I lived in Europe for like 16 years total. I'm done. That scarred me for life, okay? Although, imagine... You're from that, Greece, not the same. Yeah, that you're riding your horse in uh, hot weather, but also you can go riding uh, I don't like hot weather in the forest. Horse. It makes them hot, forest. sweaty. No. Mm, 70s but, is good, so she got good riding weather. <laughs> weather. 
Uh, uh, when you say fasting, do you mean intermittent fasting? Fasting meaning dry fast, three day fast, 72 hour fast, intermittent fasting, OMAD, one meal a day, all of it's horrible. Mm. It should be done when people are resting. And the problem that I have is that people have adrenal issues and blood sugar issues and like thyroid and all this stuff. And then they fast because they hear it and all these gurus say it. But if you fast, you must rest, right? That's the best time to rest. So fast when you sleep. Uh, can I, plus it's like the new anorexia, but it's like covert uh, autophagy. What can I do about the mild palpitation, Stephanie? I'm drinking lots of water, salt, and you don't have to, and have added a potassium citrate supplement. Are you taking magnesium? Did it say magnesium there? No, there's no magnesium. Get magnesium glycinate. Take it at night. Sounds was sound was an issue for only a few minutes, and it's good now. Okay, thank God. Thank you, RG. I'm getting cranky. When I get cranky, I start getting rude. <laughs> My knee's killing me right now. It really is. I need to put ice on it. Okay. It's swollen. Too. It's been swollen for two weeks. Uh, is there a sugar substitute you would recommend? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stevia is the only one. No monk fruit is sugar. Xylitol, mm. those tatals are sugar. Alcohols, they wreck your gut. No. Uh, hi from All I know is that I, I am bummed that there are no ice cream trees. Like I know, right? Damn, <laughs> you burst my bubble. I'm sorry, Greek. And on that bombshell, I think we need Baracolo. to. Uh, sorry, I had to speak. Finish? No. My, um, no. Sorry, you I cut you off. What'd you say? I mean, on that bombshell that there are no ice cream trees. Yeah. Maybe we should uh, finish. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Lori. By the way. Hi, Lori. I'm gonna <laughs> take these last questions. Hi from South Africa or Johannesburg, South. I love. Jo I've been there twice. It's not clipping. It's 4 a.m. here. Yeah. How would you do it at 4 a.m.? Okay. Hello, Greek guy and Steph. Okay, that's Lori. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you get that much fat in? That's a great question, Jamie. Uh, what you do is uh, you can take a meat broth. Like let's say if this is a broth, and then you just put a bunch of fat in it, like lard, tallow, butter, ghee. If you don't have histamine, and you can drink it or I, you can melt it on your food or you can just eat it out of the jar or I like, I'm so addicted to butter because I don't have any histamine issues. I take it, I chop, chop it and I put it on uh, like everything that I eat and it's, it reminds, I've eaten it for so long over the years it feels like cream cheese and I'm just like, oh my God, it's so good. I'm, I'm, I actually go through a pack of Kerrygold a day and I started going to a pack and a half and I was like, okay, I don't need to eat that much, girl, chill. How can I cure bad constipation? Well, Bruce, it could be a lot of it. What you bring up my horse for? Okay, that's because my... I was bored about my face. Okay. <laughs> um, that's the brown eye. He looks like two different horses. On that side, it's brown. And on the other side, it's crystal blue. He looks like it's weird. Uh, how do you improve HCL without supplementing or taking rest? Rest. Don't stress. Eat protein. Eat slow. I love butter. What did somebody else say? How do I improve my HCL without... Oh, uh, no. Uh, so... Mm, so many questions. Hi, Stephanie. Can you please advise how to gain weight on low carb? Uh, you need you need to you need a consultation, Mila. I don't know anything about you. I don't know if you are skinny fat. I don't know if you mean muscle weight. I don't know if you lift. I don't know. I don't know nothing. <laughs> Uh, Cindy Young, so the meat broth has protein which has to be deducted from the actual protein. Yes, as long as you're not just brothing all day long. If you're just having like a cup or two, I wouldn't worry about it. It's negligible. Uh, I'm drinking two or three cups of meat broth really limits how much protein you actually put in your on your plate. If your fat is high, it won't matter, honey. You won't be hungry. All right, he's, he's giving me the cutoff symbol. Let me just answer these last ones from Angela Down, and then we'll be done. What are your thoughts on MCT oil? Garbage. Total scam. Total scam. So is the bulletproof coffee, all of that. Don't drink coffee anyway. Uh, let me see. Right after you typed, she said it. Okay. Oh, stuff go now. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all, I... Even the people that they are listening tell you like, okay. <laughs> I know, my knees are, my, my everything hurts right now because I've had 10 surgeries on my knee and I tore everything off the, the bone and I've um, and it's, I've done a lot better because of keto, but keto is not the, or carnivore or whatever. It's not, doesn't cure you. 
like I've got missing everything. All the cartilage is gone. My men medial meniscus, meniscus is gone, so it swells easy if I, it's all swollen right now, super swollen. See that Greek guy? See mm -hmm. how they're swollen? This one's swollen. Oh. It's fat, yeah. huh? It's really big. It it's is. like a softball right now. <sighs> Bulletproof rooibos. Huh? Bulletproof rooibos. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> rooibos has less tannins in it. It's a less histamine herb if you want a really great tea. What about oxalate? What about it from what? There's oxalate in a lot of crap. Uh, how can I cure bad constipation? I asked that again. Okay. I don't know if you have a thyroid condition. I don't know if you have candida overgrowth. I don't know if you have a dysbiotic gut. I don't know if you have a broken ileocecal valve. And until I know those, Bruce, I can't tell you. There is no cure unless I know what the problem is. Fiber is not the answer. It's about fixing either bacteria or the thyroid something that's paralyzing or the stuck ileocecal valve. You can do that with massages up and around and down um, to get uh, peristalsis going again and eating enough fat and drinking enough water and all this kind of stuff. If you just had it recently, it's it, it'll clear up. Good night, y'all. You skipped me twice. Okay, Diane, one more. You're on my course page. Ask me there. Jeez. <laughs> what about cream of tartar? No, it's that's chloride, potassium chloride. It has to be potassium citrate. Uh, my knee's killing me, you guys. And what happens is if I don't rest, it, won't, it the swelling won't go down. Like my body, my cortisol's up high because I'm starting to get like, you know how you get that anxious energy, like I need to go, but you keep cranking out a bunch of energy? That won't make my knee get better, so I should go. Yeah. I don't need, Chrissy, I don't need spinach no more. That's gone, honey child. I don't okay. need spinach, gone. Bye. Boil it if yes. you do. Boil the spinach so. and toss the water. <laughs> She will never go to sleep. Unfortunately, she knows too much and she will keep talking if you keep asking. So thank you very much for uh, being uh, here on the live stream. Uh, make sure to go... Mind. Sorry. Make <laughs> sure to go in www.stephanieperson.com where you will find everything that you're... Uh, like what? All the solutions. Like uh, her uh, keto uh, course page and uh, everything that she does. And so you can follow her on Instagram at uh, Stephanie Ketogenic or on Facebook at Stephanie the Business Person. So that's the business person. And we're out. Bye, guys. Peace. Love you all.